What we're going to do is we're going to find Descartes' rule of signs or talk about it. Descartes was a French philosopher and mathematician back in the day, and he uh, discovered this rule of signs based on looking at countless functions and their graphs. And he basically saw a pattern, and his pattern helps us narrow down the types of zeros that we're going to have. So this will again help us out when we're trying to calculate how many zeros we're going to get because it will give us options. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our original function and we're going to count the number of sign changes. And we do this from term to term. So uh, sign change can be from a positive to a negative or from a negative to a positive. And this will help us determine the number of possible uh, positive zeros. And then what he also is going to do is he's going to plug in negative x into his function. And what that will do uh, is it's going to change the terms that have an odd exponent. If you have an even exponent, it's not going to change the terms at all, but it will change the terms that have a odd exponent. And then he's going to, again going to count the sign changes from term to term. Now be careful because he's not comparing the original function to the new function. He's just comparing this f of negative x and then looking at each term to term. And this will help us determine the number of possible uh, negative zeros. Uh, lastly, what you need to know is that uh, once you get these numbers, what we're actually going to do, we're not done. We actually subtract 2 until we get a negative number. And uh, all numbers prior to that negative will also be possibilities. And the reason we subtract 2 is because imaginary numbers are the only other types of zeros that would not be real. So these possibilities of real zeros are great, but if we don't have a real zero, then you're going to end up with imaginary zeros. So we'll look at an example. Determine the number of possible positive and negative real zeros of our function. So the possible positive zeros, again, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our function. Possible positive real zeros. I guess I should put number of possible positive real zeros. So we're going to count the sign changes. So this first term right here, as you can see, is positive. So to go from a positive term to a positive term, that is no sign change. And then this is positive to positive, no sign change. And then positive to positive is also no sign change. So uh, when you take that number zero and you subtract two, you get negative two. So the only number of possible positive zeros will be zero in this case. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to find f of negative x. And like I said, it's only going to change the signs that have an odd exponent. Because when you square a negative, it's basically just going to give you a positive number. So if you look at the terms that have an odd degree, those are the ones that are going to end up changing. And then what we're going to try to calculate is the number of possible negative zeros. Real zeros. And then again, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our polynomial and we'll count the sign changes. We don't compare from here to here. What we're going to do is we're going to compare each term uh, in our f of negative x. So this first term is negative, so negative to positive. So that will basically give us one sign change. From here to here, that's two sign changes. And from here to here, that's three. So for the possible number of positive, ze of positive zeros, you get three. Okay. But like I said, whatever number you get, you're going to subtract 2 until you get a negative. Well, 3 minus 2 is 1. All right, And then 1 minus 1 would be negative 1. You can't have that. So basically what that allows us is, as you can see, our degree is 3. So we have a total of three zeros. So our two options is you could have, for positive zeros, negative zeros, and then like I said, imaginary zeros or other option, and a total. We know our total is going to be 3. Okay, we could have zero uh, positive and three negative or one negative. And then that leaves us with our imaginary. Well, to get a total of three, as you can see, that would leave us with no imaginary zeros. Or we could have this option where we'd have two imaginary zeros. So this is going to help us find our zeros because it really narrows down our search. Because now you can look and you know, with, uh, with the rational zero theorem, all your numbers were positive or negative. And in this one, you could basically eliminate all of the positive numbers because we would know that those could not exist. That if you're going to find a real zero, it has to be a negative. Okay? And then uh, our other possibilities would, of course, be that uh, you have two imaginary. So 
This is Descartes' Rule of Signs.